So guys, you've read the title, you know what this video is about and uh, before I get into it, 10 things I love about India, let me just mention, I've been to India 5 times, I've been to every direction you can go in, in India, like in the north, east, south, west, from uh, northeast India to Mumbai, from Delhi to Chennai, <coughs> from the Himalayas to Bangalore. I visited a lot of India and uh, I thought it's time to make a video like this. Also, I don't try to mention the stuff that everybody mentions after coming to India for the first time. So it's a... Uh, yeah. Gotta be with a bit more experience. The first thing I love about India are the Indian festivals, the Hindu festivals and also the Indian weddings or the day before the wedding. Like, uh, if you've never been to India, you won't really get this point, but the Indian viewers will understand. If there's a festival, like the Ganesh festival in uh, Maharashtra, is in this direction, or a uh, Holi festival, or uh, for example, uh, the day before a wedding, then you know Indians can go crazy if there's something to celebrate. Like uh, when I was in India for the first time in 2019 and they had the festival where they uh, throw Ganesh into the ocean. It was white. It was so loud. The drums and the fireworks and everything, they get so loud that when I was the first time in India, I actually thought about leaving because I was so scared that my house would break. And it may sound stupid and funny for you guys, but uh, I was seriously scared because uh, when Indians go loud, they go loud. So if you ever come to India, make friends before, plan so that you arrive in the festival season, wedding season, or even in the monsoon, which is even better, and uh, you won't regret it. So uh, let's get to the next point. So uh, the next point is going to be diversity, but uh, diversity is a big, big word. And in the West it means more like, uh, for example, at home in Frankfurt, it just means that you meet a lot of different kinds of people on the streets. Like in Frankfurt, 50% of people you see on the streets, they are non-native Germans. So uh, in India, if you're walking through Mumbai, 99% of the people you're going to see are Indians. Maybe some Nepali, Bangladesh, Pakistan people. But yeah, so, so that's not the point I mean with diversity. In India, you're gonna find a lot of Indians. Not much uh, country-based diversity. But uh, the diversity I'm talking about is the diversity of Indians themselves. So, uh, for example, uh, Northeast India is a very, very different world than, uh, let's say, Delhi. Or uh, in the Himalaya, it's again a very, very different world compared to Chennai. Like, uh, India is like a, it's like a continent. It's not, it's like for us Europeans, we have Europe, we have a lot of countries, and they all have a few differences. But India is like one big Europe itself. It's like a continent. And every state is like its own little country. They have their own food, they have their own traditional clothes, they have their own languages, they have their own uh, climate and... Uh, like here for example, in Goa you see all the palms, you see all the fish, fish tali. It's uh, drastically different if you're uh, in uh, Delhi or Haryana for example. So uh, everywhere you go, you gotta experience different stuff. So uh, if you're traveling to India, one journey is not enough. Like, as I said, it's my fifth journey. And I don't even, I don't know nothing yet about India, so. Yeah, India's diversity is just great. Because you don't have to travel different countries, travel around the world, you can just travel India and you will have something different all the time. And yeah. Hello. Oh yes, coconut, coconut, okay. So the next point I have for you guys is uh, something you wouldn't probably expect, but it's uh, the feeling of safety 
or the feeling of security. Like uh, a lot of people have in their mind that India is like a very dangerous place and uh, very dangerous for women. And I obviously can't speak for a woman, I'm a, I'm a guy. But uh, compared to my hometown Frankfurt, I've never felt this safe ever in my life as I felt in India. Like uh, there are just so many people everywhere and uh, whenever you end up in trouble, I've ended up in like trouble when the police had to come two times and uh, I never felt unsafe. If you watched my last video living 48 hours on the streets of Mumbai, even there I never felt unsafe for even a minute because first there's a lot of police and security in all major cities in India. I can't speak for the small villages. But uh, you always have police or security in your reach. Second thing is, if something happens on the daytime, there are just so many Indian people and when they see a tourist is in trouble, they will all come for your help. Like, it happened twice that I ended up in trouble and every time all the other people they come to help me and everything is just fine. So, never had any trouble, never felt unsafe and uh, I would much rather explore the streets of India at night than the streets of Frankfurt, Germany. Let me just say this, so uh, you will feel very safe here. Also there's like, even at night there are so many people outside and so many people sleeping on the side of the road that even if something happens, people will just come and they will help you. Like, there's no chance somebody gonna rob you or something, like, uh, it's not a thing in India. So. Don't be afraid of this, I love it and uh, let's get to the next point, not waste time. Let's get to the next point which is uh, food. Like how, how can I make a list about things I love about India without mentioning food? But uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to describe but no matter where you're from, no matter which food you had so far, there's nothing superior to Indian food. Not here in Goa, but in different places. Let me just say this, so... Uh, Indian food has just like the biggest variety of food you can get. And uh, you can notice this by the menus. If you go to an Indian restaurant, the menu is gonna be like five times the size of a regular menu in uh, Europe, for example. And uh, India has the highest amount of uh, vegetarians. So, most of the food is veg food or it's some non-veg food which most of the times originate from some veg food so uh, yeah if you come to India and you're a, you're a food lover it's the best place you can come to like uh, as I said I've been to India five times and even now every day I try something new and every day I'm surprised how good it is and it's just so affordable and uh, I don't know, there's so much to tell about Indian food, but uh, I'm just missing the words because you gotta try it for yourself. Like if you go to an Indian restaurant in, the Euro in Europe or the US, it's not gonna taste like uh, real Indian food. You gotta come to India for the real deal. And uh, yeah, I recommend you not to come to Goa for the real deal. I would recommend you uh, Delhi, Mumbai places like this and uh, I'm making this too long again but yeah India is the biggest choice of food of any place in the world India is probably the cheapest food of any place in the world and by my opinion and the opinion of many others India is the best food in the world like uh, if I would have to think of a German food I really love I would have to think for a long time to find just one but if you ask me for Indian food, I can list you a hundred in a few minutes. It's not a big deal. But yeah, video is getting too long. Let's get to the next point. So uh, another point I really love about India is uh, the cost of travel and the amount of tools you have to travel. Like uh, if you're within a city, you can just travel by uh, auto rickshaw or uh, motorbike ride very very cheaply like for much less than a dollar 
on what I'm talking about. Hello, sir. Oh, no, maybe later. I have a coconut and a camera. <laughs> okay, so where did I stop? Yes, transport. So, uh, but if you want to travel like a long distance, like from one state to another, you're most likely gonna pay less than 10 bucks. So, uh, like in India, it's not a problem to do a one or two thousand kilometer journey for five bucks. Like, uh, they're like, uh, no matter where you want to go, they're like a hundred trains every day going there. They're like a hundred buses every day going there. They're like a hundred taxis going there every day. So, uh, no matter where you want to go in India, you can do it super cheap. I wouldn't say easy, because uh, you Indians know often it can be very crazy to get a bus ride. And the bus ride itself is also often crazy. And let me, let me not even start about the trains. But uh, also just flights or anything. Like If you want to travel to India, and once you're here, Everything is gonna be easy, everything is gonna be cheap and uh, don't get stuck to one place in India because you can you can travel a lot of it for very low money for even less money than uh, dinner in Germany so yeah let's get to the next point so the next point I have for you guys is uh, let's call it a uh, conveniency like uh, how convenient a lot of stuff is in India compared to the rest of the world like uh, there will be another video next video 10 things I hate about India and I'm gonna spe speak about uh, inconvenience but now it's time to speak about convenience so in India especially in the big cities there are just so many people and they offer so many services that no matter which trouble you end up in you gotta get help for example uh, Let's say your toilet breaks. In Germany, it's gotta be a lot of phone calls, a lot of money costs. It's gonna take at least two weeks and somebody will come at some point and try to fix your toilet. And then gonna tell you, there are parts missing, we gotta order them, it's gotta be more expensive and it's gotta take another two weeks. Or let's say, your bicycle is broken. In Germany, you gotta look up on Google Maps and you find a, you have to find a shop where you can repair your bicycle and it's almost gonna cost the price of a new bicycle and it's also gonna take a week but here in India no matter what breaks even, even if your house falls into crumbles and into pieces you just step out your door in the big city you walk two meters you say excuse me sir my house just fell into pieces my toilet broke my bicycle is broken I need to paint my walls I have nobody to take care of my kids and I need some good food and it's gonna take five minutes and all of your problems gonna be solved and the best thing about it is it's probably not even cost a uh, mentionable amount, amount of money so in India all of your tiny problems that become big problems in the West they become even tinier so convenience also regarding food like how easy it is to get food but uh, yeah, India is just convenient, but also a lot, lot of inconveniences in some points, but that's the next video. So next point. So uh, obviously I can't make a video about stuff I love in India without mentioning the people. Because uh, if you haven't been to India ever, you, may, you might think uh, in India there are a lot of like uh, scam call centers and uh, maybe beggars and something but it's that's a complicated story like those people you don't meet them if you're doing it right so 99% of people you meet in India are the most helpful people I've ever met like uh, I have so many examples but the video would just get an hour long so let me let me just pick one uh, when I came here a few months ago and uh, I arrived in Delhi and I had a pre-booked ride but I couldn't find it so the first thing that happened is people see me struggling they came to me they asked what's your problem next thing 
they gave me a hotspot, they let me look up the number of the rider, they called the rider and explained them wh where I am and uh, I reached my hotel safely. Or uh, two years ago I got lost in Kolkata and I was trying to get a bus way home and I couldn't find it because in uh, Kolkata in this area at that time the buses they, they only had Hindi writing, no, no western letters, numbers, nothing. So I was trying to get home, but then there was this one guy and he, he seen me struggling and he asked me like, where do you want to go? And I told him where I'm living and what he then did, whenever a bus came, he was looking through the entire station to me and was giving me a sign like, no, nope, wrong bus. And he did this for like 40 minutes until the right bus came and he was like, right bus, let's get in. And he actually joined the bus and took the ride with me. And he was on one side of the bus and I was on the other side of the bus. And whenever the bus stopped, he was looking through the entire bus to make eye contact and was just telling me, wrong station. And he did this the entire bus ride until he had to leave the bus. And uh, once he left the bus, he told everyone else in the bus, make sure this tourist gets out at the right place. And I arrived home safely at the right place, everything went well. And these are just like two examples of like a hundred. Like if you're traveling India solo as a foreigner, you're gonna have this stuff happen daily. Like you're gonna end up in, in a lot of problems and you, you get help with a lot of problems. So people in India, what else to say? Like you get inv invited to so many family dinners, to so many weddings, to just anything. Like uh, people are just happy to see you and uh, it makes everything so much more fun. Like if I would walk through Germany just alone, nothing happens. Nothing happened for the 27 years of my life. But if I'm walking here to India, it's gonna be an adventure, just thanks to the people. So anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much again. Let's get to the next point. If you watched me the past minutes and you've seen my sweat dripping down my face, then it's probably because India is crazy hot. It's uh, currently around 40 degrees, which is absurd for a German, but it's fine for Indians. You could even say it's a spring weather for Indians. But uh, that gets me to the next point, which is the monsoon. The news said the monsoon is gonna start in two days here in Goa, so excited for that. And uh, if you're looking up the monsoon on Google as a tourist, you will often get scared and see pictures of like drowned cities and news anchors standing in water saying how bad the monsoon is. So uh, when I first came to India, the thing that scared me the most was the crazy monsoon rain. But uh, once I arrived and once I spent my first monsoon in Mumbai, that's when I fell in love with India. And that's when I fell in love with the monsoon. So my biggest tip for you guys is don't be scared of the monsoon. The monsoon is probably the best thing that can happen to you in India. If you're a Western tourist, if, you, if you're an Indian, some Indians I, I talk to, they don't like the monsoon. But uh, most of them tell me, oh, you gotta come back here in monsoon because monsoon is the best time for just anything for exploring, for hiking, for ex enjoying. Like, it's not like it's raining 24 seven, but there's always rain somewhere 24 seven. So you will always have wind, you will always have clouds. Every, every five, six hours you get a bit of rain for a, for a few minutes. So, sorry for the noise, but uh, I had to mention this. Come here in the monsoon. A small point I have to mention before the video comes to an end. It's uh, the animals of India. Like in, uh, in Europe, if you're, if you're watching from Europe, you know that we don't really have wild animals. We maybe have like some uh, rabbits, some pigeons, squirrels, and uh, yeah, maybe, maybe some uh, boars in the forest. But here in India, you gotta encounter a lot of animals. 
a lot of street dogs, a lot of street cats, a lot of cows on the roads, a lot of lambs on the roads. You even uh, here in Goa, you also in these small side roads, you will find a lot of wild pigs. So uh, yeah, also the insects are much bigger here. So you you gotta be confronted. As I, I'm just talking, and there is a butterfly, and he's a small one. There are huge butterflies here in India. So uh, you gotta encounter a lot of animals. And yeah, what to say? If you like animals, come to India. You gotta encounter a lot of them. They just live wild on the streets. Most of the street dogs and the street cats are uh, friendly, but uh, don't get too friendly with with a lot of them because uh, as a European, I'm used to super friendly animals and not expecting them to be angry at some point. But here in India, especially at night, street dogs can get very angry. And also cats can be quite crazy. So have respect of the animals. Don't, uh, don't attack a cow that has a child. Um, just, just random average stuff. Like There are a lot of animals, but don't mess with them. But if you're friendly, you got to have a good time if you're an animal lover. So animals was the next point. So I'm, uh, last point of the video, it's uh, probably least important point, but uh, I really enjoyed this point because in Germany and stuff we, we don't have anything comparable. But even if you hear often India has a lot of water problems, if you go to any restaurant or anything in India, you will get free water. Every restaurant has those free water buckets, cans, which you can just use. You can use for washing your hands, washing your face, drinking, anything. If you ask in any restaurant, even if you're not a customer, even if you just pass by a restaurant, you ask for a bit of pani, a bit of water, and you will get help. Anywhere in India, you always get free water. So uh, in Germany, you pay uh, two euros for a water, which is like uh, 200 Indian rupees, two dollars. So. You never gotta worry about water or anything if you're in India. Um, uh, obviously not speaking for poor people from some villages, they don't have water and stuff. You, you guys know it. But uh, you get free water in India all the time. It's good water, like you don't get any waste water or something else. So I never had problems. But yeah, that was already the last point. Don't want to uh, spend too much time because Maybe you've seen from the start of the video by now, I'm wet, it's hot in India. And uh, I'm gonna film a second video, 10 things I hate about India, and it's gonna be recorded right now. So uh, be prepared to see an even sweatier version of me. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one.